All right, welcome back to Study Ball, and let's pick up where we left off with Justin Fields, who I have number four on my top five list. And again, I want to preface that with the idea that I could see Justin Fields being all the way up to number two on a lot of people's boards. Just depending on how you're breaking this down and how you're looking at it, I think two, three, and four are that close, depending on what you put a little more weight into. But we saw in part one that Justin Fields has all kinds of ability, understands how to throw the football, different kinds of throws, things that I was really, really impressed with. And today in part two, as we're doing with most of these guys, taking a look at some of the things that he has to work on, I believe, if he's going to really excel and become that special player at the next level. So I tell you guys that I'm always looking through things from a processing standpoint, because that to me is the one thing that I believe can translate, ability to see the field, understand what you're seeing, go through your reads, whatever those reads are within your offense, which always becomes another part of watching tape as you're trying to base it off of what you would do, not always what these quarterbacks are taught to do in their offense. So always another sticking point, unless you can get a chance to sit down and watch film with these guys, you're simply breaking it down and looking through a particular lens. So we're going to take a look at uh, a play here that we call popcorn. It's actually a similar play to what we had in our breakdown of Trey Lance. And they're going to get a cover two shell here. So safety back to this side, linebacker tucked inside, and a corner out here covering the flat. So not necessarily my favorite play against this defense. But if you get this defense, what it really becomes in most cases is a high-low off of this outside defender. But we always want to be able to read this out and make sure we're going through our progression. So oftentimes, depending on whether you have a swing or a flat here, we used to always read hook, okay, to swing to corner. And if you had a flat coming out here by the back, you would go flat to hook to corner. Even though you have an idea of what may play out and that you're possibly going to get a high low on the outside because you really truly believe this guy is going to push through, take the hook, this guy's going to take the flat, and then you have your high low if he falls back to take the corner, now you throw your swing or your flat. So that's really what you're expecting to get. But you always have to verify it, especially if you do this correctly where we're pushing vertical here so what happens is we're trying to hold that linebacker off. We don't want to get too tight on this hook to allow him to come into play. So we stay a little wider here, which Ohio State does. So they do a great job there of pushing this vertical, holding off that backer. So now you have hook swing right now. Read that flat defender first. Get the ball in the hands of your guy. So there, he widens right now. Boom, there's your throw right there. Throw is right here to this hook, reading this progression-wise. Flat defender, okay, he widens, take your hook. If this guy matched to him, now we would come back and we would see where that flat defender is, high or low, and throw off of him. But just being able to see the whole picture and go through your progressions, love to see that ball come out right there to the underneath guy. He goes over the top, not a bad ball, but you see just a tough look there because you got a carry by the inside backer and he's got to beat the safety in that look like to see him take the hook in that situation. Now, a lot of times, um, you know, you can pull one play out in a lot of situations and say, okay, we all have bad plays. We all have bad reads. It happens no matter how good you are and how long you've played. So what I like to do when I'm breaking these things down is I try to look at the same play numerous times and see how a person processes that play over and over again. So here we go with the same play. We got a different look now. Corner's going to go back. we got a cover three look. We're going to have the corner. We're going to have the hook. And we're going to have the swing once again. Okay, no corner down. What do we say? We're going to read the flat defender. Not really thinking the corner route at all because this guy's back there. But there's always a chance that this guy comes running down and jumps it late and, and we go up over the top. But we want to make our read on this either swing or flat to hook or hook to swing or flat based on what you're doing with that back guy. So it really is hook to swing or it's flat to hook depending on what the back is doing. So we're just going to read this defender right here. So let's watch what he does on this particular play. Same play that we just saw. Okay. So we're reading him. Reading him right there. Okay. So really here, 
I'm okay with either decision. If you feel like this guy's high and hasn't gotten wide enough, put it on him right now. If you feel like that's the read, okay? If this guy gets out wide as he ends up doing here, then you got to take your hook right now. But both of these throws are right there, right now, right in front of him. Just got to make that decision, process the information, make that decision. And now here's where the corner's driving. Now I don't really expect him to get over to this. This is a next level part of it where you're just reading that flat defender. Make one of those guys, uh, make the throw to one of those guys right there off of him. This guy's coming down late. He's not really going to break it up. But if you catch that as you're going to throw the hook, now you can put your corner out up over the top. But once again, I'm not expecting him to process all that. I just want to see him process that flat defender and make a decision. Right here, I'm okay with either one of them. Feel like he's pushing too far? Boom. Put that right on him right here. Feel like he's slow to it and he's got depth? Put it right here and let your guy go get some yards for you on first down. Instead, holds the ball a little bit, turns into a throwaway there. At least he does a nice job of getting rid of the football, knowing where he can throw it away and not taking a sack. But a play that I just like to see him process this a little bit better, a little bit quicker, get the ball out of his hands. So once again, just body of work, body of work, body of work, body of work. Okay, boom, hook, swing. Same play, once again, this guy out here kind of playing in a look where you say it's probably cover two, even though he's a little bit softer right here. But I want to read him right now because he's my flat defender. He stays wide, my hook gets inside of him, ready to hook, pit that hook right now. You gotta be ready to hit it right now because in these looks, they actually have the guys to pick it up. So if you're gonna read to that side, they've got this corner that can take the swing, they've got this backer that can match to the hook, they got this safety that can cover the corner. So on this particular play, you've gotta be really sharp and your timing's gotta be really, really good to get the ball out right there, right there. You see that guy stay wide, Right off the bat, got to be ready to hit it on the turn. Hoping that tight end holds off that Mike Backer. Be ready to hit that hook right now. Okay, a little hesitation there. Okay, if you feel the squeeze there at the end, okay, no problem. Now turn, kick it out here to your swing. Ball out of your hands, get it going, make a play. Once again, just holding the football, a little indecisive with his decision making and his processing on that particular play. Okay, so now we're going to run, it's a play we like to call bullets. So we're gonna have a little bit of a pivot in here and then you're gonna have the bullets route there. Then you got somebody coming up over the top on the backside. So Reed starts here with this corner. Corner up in a tight look, looks like he's playing man, great. This is what we want. Got this bullets right here. We're trying to get a little bit of a rub as we run this pivot, force this defender to come underneath and hopefully we get the throw up over the top. If that defender that we're trying to rub goes up over the top, now we can make a quicker throw and hit our back very quickly on this particular play. Here we don't really get the rub that we want. We allow him to do exactly what he wants to do, but he matches right to it. See that as a quarterback, see the match, he carries, he goes underneath, boom, right there, recover, one to two, one to two, see the corner falling off, right? The corner soft as well. See the coverage, instead of trying to fit it in there, just drop it down to your guy underneath, but just the keys. The keys is we're trying to watch this guy right off the bat. Once we know what we've got up top, we wanna to watch this guy and see if he's forced to move off of his path. In this particular case, he's not. He goes right through that, doesn't have to be forced to go underneath, doesn't get hit at all. He matches right to the back. I like to see Justin just drop this underneath, take the easy completion here. But once again, you still see the talent level here with Justin Fields. I mean, two defenders there, not a great decision, but you see the accuracy up and over, puts it where his guy can actually make a catch here, even though don't expect him to make that catch. At least puts the ball in a great position based off of what he's seeing. Okay, so now we're going to look at uh, some seam looks. Okay, so what we would call double seam or all go. Some of these times those guys 
turn it into go routes. Sometimes they're running comebacks over on the sideline. Really just depends uh, what the actual play call is. But then you've got a seam here and then a seam here. So what we're looking for is we're really looking for these safeties, specifically whether they're just a two high or a one high type look. So here, going to really what looks like a cover two look. Safety's high, so on this particular look, we are going to read this inside guy to the outside guy. We are gonna to try to stretch this safety right here inside out, we're expecting this backside safety to take this go down the sideline. If you come, take the next step, if he goes wide and takes that away and you're looking to hit this and you feel the squeeze of the backside safety, then you'll come to your go on the backside. But here we get the turn of the hips on the backside safety, so everything should be about this safety right here. Want to go down the middle, he stays tucked inside, get outside down the boundary and go get yourself a big play. So here he is, gets the movement of this safety inside to chase this. Like to see him get out here and take that big play. Nice pocket, a lot of time. Just get out there and go get your big shot down the field based on the two high safety out there. So we can always sit back here and say, oh, quarterback should have thrown the deep one and go get this one out here based off the safety. Yes, no doubt. That's what we're, we're hoping. That's what we're trying to get. We want them to see that and get the big play, but I'm always going to commend the quarterback for, hey, if you don't see it, doesn't look good to you, know where your check down is. Know where your check down is. So he doesn't panic, doesn't like what's down the field, finds his check down. Finds his check down, get a completion. The big C, we always say, hey, in one of these situations, now it's third down here, like to see him push it down the field if he's got a shot, but hey, let your playmaker make a play for you, get the ball, get the completion, see what can happen. So at least he got to his check down there, although I'd like to see the processing a little bit better down the field. Okay, we're gonna come back to the same play again. So we're gonna have the double seam once again. Double seam, this time they're gonna drop down and they're gonna go to a one high safety. Okay, so one high safety, instead of reading and inside out off a two high, this guy's going back to the middle. We're gonna read this guy, and can he cover this seam out here? Or can he cover that one right there? He's only gonna be able to cover one. Right now, he's starting on the backside numbers. So he is way wide in his initial alignment. So I'd love to see right here come out. You got him deep and all the way on the backside hash. This throw right here because he's got outside leverage here. Now we'll take it to the next step. He comes out of this and he knows he's going to have a short completion on the outside. Never going to fault him for that. Okay. I like the seams. That's what we're looking for against one high. But if he feels this guy's tucked inside and he's got an easy one-on-one -on -one out here, an easy completion, take it, which he does here. So not going to get mad at him. He gets a completion. It's a nice completion. It works out well. Maybe. I saw this guy push through right now. So I thought that's why he was going to get this seam right here because his safety was on the back side. Maybe he saw that guy kind of settle here and not push through because he's already coming out on his throw and he makes that throw to the outside. Nice completion. Good throw once again. Good accuracy. I was just hoping for that seam against that look, but all good. We'll get a completion. Let's keep moving. Okay, so now we get basically the exact same look once again in this game with the stop out here. We're going to get the safety coming from the back side, this guy dropping down. Okay, now he tries to go back side here. So, just want you guys to see this. Well, let's first let's just start with the seam. So, if we're going with the seams, there's the throw I like again. We got this guy turning back side. He's holding back there. He's way back on the backside hash. Love to see this seam throw right here and then work out to his stop as he did on the last play there. If he's reading the middle safety, he ends up going backside here, which I'm okay with because here's why he's going backside. Okay, we've got a defensive end with his hand in the ground. The next guy is this linebacker right here. If he's seeing rotation, come back here. 
and he's seeing the one-on-one -on -one back here thinking there's no way this linebacker right here can get all the way out and stop it. I'm okay with that. What happens? Unfortunately for him, defensive end pops up and goes underneath his one-on-one. -on -one. So with that, he's not in a position timing-wise to get back to these seams. Don't want him throwing a stop to the wide side of the field late. So would have liked to seen him work the double seams again because of the middle safety and the rotation that he's seeing. But I see exactly what he's looking at. Hey, you got one on one, make the game easy. I'm good with that. Then he sees this guy pop out. So he's not forcing it in there. I'll live with that. And just like we said in the last one, what's he do well? Know where your check down is. Know where your check down is. Find your check down. So gets fooled. Good look by the defense. Defensive end pops up. I think I got a one on one. I don't have it. Don't panic. You got a nice pocket. Find your check down. Should have been a completion. So again, looking at these things, would like to have seen him work these double seams here, but not going to be mad at him for going here or the last one, going to one-on-one -on, -one on the outside when he knows it's a sure completion. Drop back, get your sure completion. I'll live with that. This pops out, right? Something happens that he doesn't expect. What do you do in those situations when something happens that you don't expect? Oh, don't panic. Relax in the pocket. Go find yourself a check down, get yourself a completion, try to keep those chains going. Okay, got another look here. Same idea, just doing it a different way. So here we've got double seam, just doing it from a two by two instead of a three by one. Doing the same thing defensively, dropping down here. Safety coming from the backside numbers. Okay. So, a couple different things here. Read that free safety, okay? Maybe have a shot right here, okay? Maybe that's a tough shot. Maybe he sees this corner starting to fold in over the top. I can live with that. Quarterbacks that are watching, okay? There's a couple things. Yes, he's on the backside hash, so he's leaning to the backside. So oftentimes you will go to the front side because he's got a long way to go. The other thing that can happen is this guy's turning and running this direction. Really hard for him to stop his feet and come back and cover the backside seam. So you see a guy, even if he's out of position, he's got to run to get to position. It just seems natural to go to the wide side or the furthest guy away from him. But sometimes it's even easier to go to the guy that might be closer to him. But because his back is to him, it's nearly impossible for him to turn back and cover that seam. So here, maybe a shot at the seam right there. Looks like he's trying to work through this. Didn't like it. Work through this to the stop. Feels this guy coming out. Okay, that's good processing right there. If he's able to see all of that, that is great processing to see all those different levels. Didn't get through there clean. Feel the corner sink. This guy bouncing outside. Good stuff right there if he's seeing all of that. And once again, trying to find his check down. A little panic there just because the official's in the way and his receiver, I think, is sliding somewhere. He's not really sure. Like to see him complete this football. But same idea. Didn't work out exactly like he had hoped. I thought there were some opportunities here to get this, work that safety, and possibly get one of those seams. But didn't like it. Didn't take that shot. Worked through it. Got to his check down again. Really like that part of what he's shown us on the last few plays that he's not panicking when he doesn't see something or something doesn't play out like we might expect it to or we want it to, but he's buying, a, buying his time and finding ways to get completions uh, knowing where his check down is. Okay, just put this one on here. Uh, this was one of the games that, that he struggled with. And, you know, we're going to have struggles, and, and sometimes we're not going to play our best game. But this was something that he did in this game that uh, wasn't really characteristic of him. But when you get pressure on you, you're going to get pressure in the NFL. Got to be able to handle pressure in games where things aren't going your direction. And you got to be able to figure out a way to handle it uh, well. And a number of times in this game, he got into situations where the pressure was on him. And he started just kind of throwing the ball up to his guys and hoping that they were going to make a play when he's under pressure. Um, and this one turns into an interception. So just something that I noticed. And again, we all have these games. I had games where I threw 
five interceptions where I just kept slinging it. It didn't work and I was trying to make plays and uh, it just didn't happen for me. So these things happen, but you just always want to be cautious when you see a guy that uh, gets under pressure and, you know, he's doing some of these things. So just something to keep your eye on as he goes to the next level, just has to get better in these games where things are frustrating for him to just relax, let the game come to him, not try to do too much um, and try to make every single throw in these types of situations because obviously at any level it can go the other direction when you're doing these things just got to clean that up when you have those games all right so there's another look at Justin Fields and again you saw some really really good things in there as he went through some processing and he got to his check down some things that I really really like and then there were some things that I just wonder what, what was he looking at what was he seeing in those particular situations and so that to me when I talk about processing are some of the things that I saw with Justin Fields. We saw on tape one, some really good processing, some really good throws, some really good things that he did. And then in tape two, some things where you just wonder how he was processing those things. It was a little slower in that process. So, uh, you know, again, that's why I put him at number four. There's so many good things. I could see him all the way up to number two in this draft class because he's done so many good things. But that was just the area, some inconsistencies there, dropped him to number four on my list.